So, uh, congratulations. <laughs> Discussion in part, this can help us even do some debriefing. So, I don't know if you'd like to have a seat, pull some chairs up, and invite all of you. I, I Before we get into that, though, I want to thank some various people and point out who's been part of our team. Um, I want to thank Pat Stacy from the University of San Francisco's media department who once again is video recording. We have had this long standing relationship. This is our seventh. Institute in collaboration with the University of San Francisco. Our second year doing this at Balboa, uh, and we're really so honored to have that relationship. Our team members and as our presenters, I'd like to, Ellen, can you please come up? This is Ellen Sebastian Chang. Jill Smith, who is a teacher at <laughs> And I do want to give special props. And Jill, I had the pleasure of last year, Jill was part of our institute and then created an entire language arts class around using the Universal Declaration as the guiding framework for teaching language arts skills. Three of her students are with us as part of this institute. well as helping us learn. I don't mean to just say that, but you have to see these are, I think, very special participants. And I hope I haven't, if I missed any. And I want to point out Anthony Ragone, who came back from New York to help us, just help carry out the Institute, but also, as you saw, participate. I want to point out John Mocheno, who uh, was in our first institute class in 2010, was taking the curriculum over to Mandela High School in, in Oakland, and now is assistant principal here at Balboa. There's a lot of interconnections. I do want to point out Jeff Larson, who's a teacher at Balboa, who was in our very first, uh, participated from the very start, and whose class doing animation created a lot of the different parts of Balboa Assembly. So I hope you enjoy seeing that. I'd like to now turn it over to our guests and see if any of you have any questions or comments that you'd like to ask of our participants so we can have a little. Can I just apologize? Yes. We are in the middle of a, a, a leadership retreat oh, that's okay. starting again at 1230 and he's the facilitator, so oh, I need yeah. to drag my people out here. This just it brings education alive, and I just I'm really proud of our students and our teachers and this whole uh, this whole process. So thank you so much. It was delightful. It was very impressive. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Probably lunch will be. We'll hear the knock on the door for lunch. But in the meantime, anybody have any particular questions? I was wondering how the curriculum extends out into the rest of the student body or outside into the community? Well, you may be asking, we are going to be discussing this. This is our afternoon discussion as to how to move this forward. So it might be a little so premature for our participants to answer that. But Jill might be able to do it. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> and this is my husband, so. <laughs> shape it to your content. I mean, that's what I was able to work out was in listening, writing, reading, speaking. If your focus is human rights, then you talk about human rights, you read about it, you write about it, you dig deep, you extend out into your community by research, by finding out what's happening in your community. Um, it's You can extend it as far as you have the, 
the, the will to look. Um, and you can extend it internally as far as you have the will to look, I think, in both. Thank you. No. <laughs> Comments from what you saw? How do you guys feel, just generally, reading the document, knowing what was proposed based on what happened 50, 60 years ago, and what you see in the world today? That's a deep question. Yeah. Without bombing. Lots, <laughs> lots of progress, but also tremendous disappointment. Uh, the world as it could be is a great thematic. Uh, in these really difficult times where not only uh, are we uh, seeing you know horrible war and uh, human rights violations around the world but we're feeling it at home we're feeling the uh, the uh, scourge of, of racism still in very very uh, tragic ways we're uh, we're experiencing our students being deprived of their education because of budget cuts and because we don't educate about human rights. Uh, so there's, uh, but at the same time, we're working on it, right? So it's not like uh, uh, a hopeless feeling. It is, there is both the discouragement and the hope at the same time because human rights are in play. For me, it was nice just to be a part of this group because you can see different backgrounds, different you know, life experiences, different places in society that we come from. And um, this to me, like things like this, is the, is the continuation of, of, of getting to the place where the UDHR um, is something that's less um, esoteric and becoming more concrete. You know, we, we have our, our own UN delegation right here, you know, <laughs> studying different places. So I think things like this is, is what helps it move forward. I also think that it's, uh, it can be very disheartening seeing what's happening in the world um, and that we it's easier to deny someone's rights if you don't see them as fully human um, and so it's I think in this process it wasn't just learning about the you know the document but it's especially in incorporating the arts it's also as a way of rebuilding community so that you can have these kinds of discussions about the world about various forms of oppression that people might not be seeing um, or uh, maybe experiencing in their life, but in someone else's, it's fully present. Um, so I think in this process of building that kind of community where there can be that dialogue, that you're able to then address some of those. Um, mm -hmm. And you have a, a burning desire, and it's also, it offers a framework for what can happen or what should be. I think that's useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for, I agree with what you said. And also for me, initially, I was really disappointed because I, I was reading through it and I was like, oh, the U.S. doesn't do that. Oh, the U.S. doesn't do that. And earlier today, somebody mentioned a statistic that only like 7% of people in the U.S. have even heard of the um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And so um, that being said, there's now 20-something of us who know more about it, who know more about how to incorporate it into our curriculum. And if we're working with 100 something kids per year, if 20 of those students even are like, ha kind of have it in the back of their mind, um, they can then share the information with others. Like, I, I feel hopeful because the more people that learn about it, the more I feel like it can spread to our government, and our systems, and our institutions, um, so that people do have a fair shot and we do have resources for people who wouldn't otherwise have them. And so I, I feel somewhat hopeful. Um, and that's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, to me, the, the UN is great at building those gorgeous, but if kids don't incorporate it, if the community doesn't have it in their lives, uh, you know, we're not going to advance very far. So, but uh, it's a great work. I was actually going to, and I, you know, I was putting so on the spot since we had three students here who actually did learn about the UDHR. I don't know if you want to say what it meant once you learned about it. How did you feel about it? <laughs> did you know about it before? Were you took it last? No. No. So what um, what did you take from the experience? How did it 
What did you learn about? Um, did it make you feel like depressed, like everything is bad, or did it give you more hope? Give me more hopes. How about you, Mara? Uh, well, I didn't know about it until last year. Oh, I thought it was like something different, like each state has their rights. And once I learned about it, I was like, oh, I can't believe I have these rights. I don't need it there enough. I thought it was fun. At the same time, it was interesting that we have our own rights. Have you, have you told other people about it? Um, it's only some of my friends I know about it. Told my parents about it, so yeah. Had they heard of it before? Um, I think only my dad, and, uh, and he talked to my mom about it. Not everyone is a teacher here. We have a policeman here. <laughs> and I, wonder, <laughs> I wonder how he's experienced this whole thing. Well, being out there in the community, you, you, you come across different people from different walks of life. And you, you, some of these human rights, uh, you see people's rights being violated, whether it's the, the battered woman at home or, or the kid who's been, you know, uh, enslaved into prostitution. Uh, so you definitely see all the work that, that needs to be done. And uh, definitely, I can see how I can do it even with, with my, my work and what I do. And, you know, I, I work with troubled kids when I'm not doing, uh, responding to patrol calls. And, I'm definitely, you know, I, I learned a lot, and I learned, uh, uh, learned that even through the arts, you know, you could say how it is without anyone becoming offended, and it opens that dialogue. And it's, uh, you know, it's very beautiful. I definitely uh, know that I would do something with it. I already talked to Sandy, we're going to talk about it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's great. It, it, it's the more people that know, you know, how many people are in here? 20 something people? This is 20 something more people that know about it and can, you know, it can go impact 10, 20, 15 more people, right? Knowledge is power. So thank you for, for having me. Anybody else from the stage want to say anything in terms of even what, it, you know, I'm curious if you want to explain what it felt like to actually finally do the presentation, the idea of I am still a white boy who cannot dance. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for the audience. Um, what's one thing you're going to walk away with from seeing what you saw? You're starting at your doorstep. That to me was the most, uh, very relevant, very pertinent. Because, yeah. Um, the person walking down the street, someone you ran into in your job. Uh, it, we carry the, 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 make that human rights, the fact that we're all the same, mankind is one, and extend that wherever we go with love and kindness as much as possible, regardless of who it is. That's the only way change can come. I mean, writing something, carrying a sign, all that is great, but kindness and some consideration and empathy moves mountains to me. So, it's something that we talked about as it's easy for us to look at and say, oh, across the ocean, you know, these people are violating rights all the time. It's easy for us to say, well, it's happening there. But something that I focused on was like, what can I do right now? I came in a little late, but I'm Natalia's friend, and I had, I don't know about the document, so I'm, that's, I'm going to go that's check good. that out. That's a big takeaway. Yeah, just tell me more people about No pressure, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> As a performer, sometimes, I know that I like to sometimes know that I even impression did I? You know, I'll say, I'll say something. Uh, and uh, I'm Sandy's daughter, so I've been learning about this for <laughs> 10 years now. But, um, you know, or that my whole life. Um, but, you know, I think that whether it's in this performance or it's in um, classroom settings where it's being talked about, 
Um, I sort of, I'm a very pragmatic person, and I, I often uh, crave, uh, like, to the solution. I want to, I want to do something right now. I want to do something today. I want to do something right here. That's great, but like, what is it? I always want to, I want to hear like, the how, and I think that that's the hardest part. Um, so it's. You know, and, and, and we work in government, so you hear a lot of people talk about all the problems of, of the county or the area or the, or the country, for that matter, or the world. And we can talk all day about it. We can talk till we're blue in the face about it. You can do all the performances in the world and they can be beautiful. But, but what is like the how? Uh, because there's, is, is like the information enough? I don't, I don't know, we kind of talked about it even last night. Like, is raising consciousness about this document, is that enough? Um, and I think that's a step. But like, what are the other hows? Like, there's so many, there's so much. It's like, so it's overwhelming, I think. It would be, I think it would, I crave more like, of the how, like what is it that can be done today, here, in, you know, my doorstep. One of the, the actions in one of the very first performances that we created that uh, working with uh, Destiny Arts is they actually had the, the students because the students were kind of overwhelmed like yeah what do we do what do we do and so we started with an exercise that was just called minute actions what is one thing that you can commit to do that might make a change in the world and some of them were as simple as uh, I'm going to remember to turn the lights off when I leave a room and not leave lights on. Someone said, I'm going to give up drinking bottled water. And so uh, there were, all, you know, uh, some students said, I'm going to stop using the N word. And that was their action. So there, there was a lot, that, and we were, we were actually going to talk about that this af afternoon when we were doing our debrief. That, you're right, you know, what are the actions you can take? And I think sometimes we all feel overwhelmed and go, this is huge because there's this bureaucracy and that, you know, law or this <laughs> amendment that needs to be changed. And so it seems overwhelming. But those first little steps are what make bigger steps and more people taking steps. And so I, I think that's a, you know, a good call to action. It's like, what's the how? And where do you begin? Well, I'd like to say thank you so much um, to all my instructors. I'm glad it, I'm honored that to be part of this program. Definitely from all my colleagues here, I, I know I've learned something um, from each and every one of you. And I, I think that's, everybody can agree on that. So um, thank you. I appreciate it. Any other comments? Answer I just thought that was a great point. Just starting small, just thinking of anything you can do. Because uh, I, I think there is a 13th monkey uh, interaction that happens that the more people do it, somebody sees, you know, you see these commercials, someone helps someone across mm -hmm. the street, and then you open the mm -hmm. door, right. and it, it just it helps you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does, I think that one of the biggest concerns, I think even just in thinking about education, knowledge is power. And, and if you don't know something, if you don't even know that, it, that this set of rights are in place and it is an agreed upon internationally, what was the word it's, that um, Amy used? It's um, customary law. This is, so even though the Universal Declaration is not enforceable, because it's a declaration and not a treaty, uh, so it can't be ratified by countries. But as we learned on Tuesday, it is considered customary law now. It is a, it is an agreement, and um, so if you don't even know that that agreement is there, then you can't begin to hold people accountable, including yourselves and the people around you. So we have to start somewhere, mm -hmm. and I think that that is an important piece of the puzzle because it is having that having that information as a starting point can begin more action to say 
to be able to use language around human rights as to why do we need to do something. It's not just because something happened that was wrong, it's because this right is being hampered for this person, and, it, and it's complicated. One person's right might become an intrusion on somebody else's right, but you have to have a way of having that discussion because it's complex. So if you don't even have the vocabulary for it, you can't get to that kind of conversation that is needed to make the changes. And so to me, if only we could just take quick action to make it all work. Um, but on the other hand, um, I feel that getting that, that practical, factual knowledge about what it is and what we can do with it is an important starting point. Yeah, our culminating project for our English class was to educate others. That was the action, that was the how, because we saw in our research and videos that we saw about how the how when people learned about their rights um, that they were empowered and that that changed, then things started to change, but they had to know about it first. And so our step was to create posters about the different rights and to research what was being, what was the source of the problem and what was the solution, what were things being, that were being done to address it and kind of um, educate our own student body. So that was our, our how, <laughs> how do you do it, yeah. Has, do you know if there's ever been a Hamilton like Universal Declaration of Human Rights musical staged or yeah. put well, together? We have to get, uh, what is his name? We have to get him to know about it because we're <laughs> 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 He may not even know about the Universal Declaration, but I suspect he has a good idea. No, I yeah. think so. That, uh, and look at look at what happened because of what he did around Hamilton. Maybe yeah. we could request him to consider uh, staging something. We this is we need more of that type of recognition. Anybody else? Any comments? Questions? Anybody hungry? I'm gonna go yeah. look for the food. So I suggest I'm gonna thank everybody. Take a few minutes to just, we will, we will get the food here within minutes. We'll start putting out the fruit and all the things that go with it. And if you'll just stay with us for a little bit, you can mingle with each other, and we'll, we'll just have some food for additional food for thought. I want to say, um, I think folks should check out this area over here, the tree, oh, yeah. and the artwork that folks did this week. Um, I, I, I'm, all, I'm one who believes that when we tap into our creative minds is when we can start to actually think of how to change things, because we need to think outside the box and get inspiration. I'm inspired by all of these folks. Everyone in here has inspired me in some way. And, you know, um, and I think it can go out to you as well. So I would say, I think they're okay with it if you can check out their artwork as well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs>